、台湾 USA で活躍する男、ダービー西田。いやーでも朝だったら、タヤです。はい、ドラシャが壊れました。優勝に日本語を話し、日米対決ではアメリカ代表で参戦。見た目は日本人でもアメリカ国籍。一体こいつは何者なんだ。その真相を探る。This is Robbie Nishida, and we're at Ebisu Circuit. It is beautiful out. And I thought instead of asking him about like certain things in Formula D or all these like crazy things. Um, I was gonna do something I find really like interesting to myself because he's an interesting person I think he has a really interesting take on something What is the difference between like Japanese and American drifting because everybody gets so triggered on it You know some of them think it's a hundred percent style some of them think it's a hundred percent something else You know like they think it's Abu moon cars and super low or some of them think it's you know all about Nakamura or some people It's all about VHS, you know JDM tapes. So if you'll tell us what your opinion is, I would love to hear it Look over here, Sai. Yeah, there's a big difference, I think. Um, talk as long as you want. Japanese drifting and American drifting. First of all, I think because of the history in Japan, we've probably been drifting for a little bit longer than a lot of the US people. And also, I think the involvement of internet,、um, technology, there's a lot of things that you can do now. There's a lot of things that you can just order online. You don't even have to go to junkyards and dig do things like how we used to do back in the days.、Um, so I think it's the availability of parts and stuff like that as well.、Uh, like we were talking about, we were talking about this earlier too, but then the tuning,、um, everything kind of matched. Everything kind of came together in Japan because back in the days, I think the cars, are, the availability of the cars, we already had SR turbos, you know, the good 4 AGs, you know, 1Js and all that stuff. It was out of the blocks. We had cars that you could just jump in and just start drifting. Versus in the US, it's, you got to go through more obstacles on doing engine swaps and you know, a lot of other things. So I think the availability of it was a lot easier in Japan, and I think the car cost is a lot cheaper back in the days. Now they're getting kind of higher, but、uh, it used to be cheaper. So people probably were able to just enjoy it as a very smaller hobby and just kind of do it, a, oh, you know, I'll just go and drift at a toge or a track. With my registered car, that I don't really have to do much to it because it's already a turbo. Versus in the US, if you bought, like, for instance, a 240, you had a KA in it, and there's a little bit more that you wanted to do to it. So people would have to do things. And because of the internet and a lot of the information that everybody has now, people think that that's the only way to do it. So they start dumping a lot of money into the cars. In my eyes, it seems like a lot of people do that so much that they forget. That they have to drive the car and they forget that they have to spend money on going to the track, buying tires. The next thing you know, they're like, oh man, I'm burnt out after a year of building the car and it's not fun anymore. Versus in Japan, it seems like you can just have this car.、Um, I think my first Corolla was like $300 and just bought, not bought, but found tires on the side of the road or somewhere and just went driving. All we did was spend money on gas. And you know, I didn't make so much money back in the days, but still, I was able to do it. So, maybe that's a big difference. Maybe it's just the whole history.、Um, everything maybe came a little bit too quick, but at the same time,、uh, by that happening, a lot of the Japanese people are kind of looking at the, the US market, the builds and the swaps and all the amazing things that came along with the shorter history on the drifting side in the US is actually coming back to the Japanese side too. So, it's like a whole mix max thing where back in the days, The Toge cars went to the States and it became the sports compact cars, and that trend came back to Japan. And we got the drifting thing going back and forth. So it's like a give and take thing, and it just takes and happens over the many years that drifting started. So I think that's the difference. So there's not a big difference. It's just that the timing of it happening, the trend coming in,、um, you know, we don't watch VHS tapes or DVDs much. In the US, but in Japan, they still use DVDs.、Um, everything's emails and photos、um, in the US, but in Japan, there's a lot of places that still use fax machines. So it's one of those technology things is going to come up. Maybe in the next couple of years in Japan, they're going to come up with something amazing again. And then the US is going to see that and say, okay, you know, we're going to do something else. And it's just that. So I think it's just like an overlay of、uh, the drivers and the teams and the builds and the, the, the drifting and the car community. So, not really different. We're all human. We all like to drift. And I honestly think drifting is a big waste of time because you're just burning <laughs> rubber and doing nothing. But the things that are nothing and not cool are actually cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah.、Um, so, 
Japan is going to eventually run out of Jay-Z and all these cool rear-wheel drive cars that made you guys really special for so long. Do you have any plans like in the future? Do you think that you'll be driving some other kind of car? Or do you think this is the golden era of cars in Japan and you're just gonna like stick on with, you know, RBs and Jay-Zs and SRs and stuff forever? Is there anything coming down the pipeline that you think is cool and exciting to you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yes, I know a lot of the motors that we run in the cars here are probably 20 plus years old now. Technology is getting old. We're still using it. There's a lot of 2Js that are being used. In the US, it seems like they're coming up with more better, not better, but just newer things such as the newer V8s. Um, they're still available in some of the cars. Seems like Japan's not, the technology portion of it isn't uh, there yet. They're not coming up with anything newer. So everybody's kind of hanging on to what they have. So I've seen that um, the availability of the motors and the cars aren't as much as before, so things are getting more expensive. So, to be honest, when I first started, if everything cost as much like how it is now, I probably wouldn't be drifting. And I think I started drifting because it was very easy to get into because everything was so cheap. Versus now, I think the guys, the kids that are driving nowadays, it's a little bit harder because there's like a certain standard that they want, but then it's so expensive. So yes, the drifting community and the cars are probably getting smaller, but at the same time, the value is getting bigger too. So it's a give or take thing, you know, if you have like a, if you have 500 guys driving $500 cars versus you have 100 guys driving $5,000 cars? Yeah. Is Something that math like that. right? Something like that, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's that, you know? The money is there and it's being spent. It's just that there's less people doing it versus, um, you know, um, that could be a little bit more valuable in some other ways. Um, social media has been big, you know, um, that brings in, you know, other people that can make more money off of that and stuff like that too. So the value is just being carried different. But I think um, Japan will probably one day come up with something interesting. Maybe they'll do more VQs, some of the Toyota V6s. Maybe they're going to start importing more V8s. Um, but I think that the SRs and 1Js and 2Js are, and RBs too, they're still the strong source in Japan. But yeah, I mean, but believe it or not, the exporting, it's a lot. And yes, they are more expensive than you know, how it was before. I mean, I remember we used to blow up 1Js for fun and just throw it away because there's <laughs> a gazillion of them and now you gotta buy it. But it's still gonna be cheaper than it is anywhere else for now. So we'll see how that's gonna go. Um, but, you know, maybe some things, maybe the new Supra motor would be cool. I don't know, maybe something new will come up. That'll be easy because it's in every BMW, basically the 335 turbo motors and stuff. That could be a good source of motors yeah. going forward. Um, the same thought process with the cars and the engines and all that stuff um, with Ebisu and a lot of the venues like Ebisu and a lot of the drifting infrastructure here was built during like the bubble economy, you know, 25 years ago. Um, have there been a lot of like new things going on with drifting? Are there more drivers 25 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago in drifting in Japan or are there more now? Are there still tracks being built? and exciting things going on in drifting in Japan, or is it kind of dying? Like, is it on the way up or the way down? You know what I mean? Um, I think the whole drifting community and, you know, track circuits, like Ebisu was built many years ago. Um, I know a lot of the tracks are really old too, and then all I've seen is like, a couple of the tracks closing down because of noise. Um, people around it don't like it anymore. I remember them talking about the first Matsuri or the Matsuri we had like in 20 years ago or something when I was probably like 20 or 21 or something like that. There was so many people, it was like 800, 900 entrants and then now they're down to like two, 300. So I know there's probably a lot less people driving. Just in general in Japan, there's a lot less people that are getting licenses because you could train everything. You can jump on the train, mm -hmm. um, you know, the commuting and stuff like that for work. A lot of people that are downtown in Tokyo they all don't even have licenses, and that comes from probably having to have the cars registered. Um, that costs a lot of money, the taxes, having parking spaces just to have a car. Um, it's, uh, the cost of it is there, it's, it's pretty crazy. So um, there is a lot less people driving, and I do see a lot less people drifting too. Um, so I think it is, uh, it partially is uh, maybe a dying sport as a hobby for some people, but it's never gonna go away because there's you know a lot of people so a lot of people coming in and do it and they're still interested. So yeah. to be honest, like in for Ebisu Circuit too, power vehicles being here, 
and like guys like you coming to here to show what Ebisu Circuit is all about and stuff like that and generating more people to come in from outside of uh, Japan is actually a good thing. Um, there's, I think they're more welcome with a lot of foreigners coming in to, you know, actually it's all about economy and stuff like that. So you got to come and by, the, by, by coming here you're going to drop money, you're going to stay somewhere, pay somebody to stay there, buy food just that you know you're just generating money for the economy so that's even a good thing for this place and I think by doing this and having more foreigners here if the Japanese community sees it and they think that's something cool too maybe that'll generate more people to get back into cars and get back into drifting too so yeah. um, it's you know maybe it is at the bottom maybe it'll come back up thanks to you know a lot of the help from people outside of Japan too um, never know I mean it's a worldwide uh, sport yeah. and everybody likes doing it so hopefully the, the whole down thing would just, you know. I feel come like back this up. place got really lucky that YouTube was invented and like there was a distribution of media and everybody could show their trips here and how accessible it was. And especially with like Google Maps, a lot of weird things came together all at once to make it much easier to get here. Google Translate, like this place, I came here 10 years ago, it was mentally hard to get around. Yep. You know what I mean? Like it was really difficult. Maybe not 10 years ago, eight, I don't know. But it was, it was a long time ago. You know, Google Maps was barely working and everything. Now we have so much technology making it cheap and easy to get here. Plane tickets are really cheap because yep. you can search them really easily. Sometimes I get them as cheap as 400 bucks. Um, we can share our adventures here so everybody sees like where to eat, where to go, how to buy a car, do everything. Like, I feel like if it wasn't for that, also in America, like drifting might have taken a huge nosedive. Um, do you think that's true? Yeah, like, I think I mean, we got really lucky with a lot of yeah, that. No, no, we did because uh, when I first went to the U.S. to drive a car, uh, it was like what, 13, 14 years ago or something. I remember we barely had internet. Yeah, I mean, we did emails and stuff like that, but we didn't have smartphones. We didn't have all this crazy technology. So I remember, you know, typing out all the uh, addresses where I'm going to go to on MapQuest. And I had yeah. a whole folder of like, oh, going to here to here, going to here to here, having that because I didn't have any navigation or anything. And on top of that, I had to borrow a phone at the airport because my Japanese phone wouldn't work in the U.S. And I probably had to call a car to get towed back to the shop, back over, and, you know, this and that. Cause I didn't know anybody to borrow a trailer and stuff like that. My yeah. phone bill for that month was like $700. Woo! Of, yeah, and that was just being there for like a week. Yeah. So, I mean, now it's like you find Wi-Fi and, you know, even now I could just borrow like a Wi-Fi puck at the airport and, you know, survive spend a hundred dollars on Wi-Fi for like two weeks and like yeah this is like the technology is like so much better now and I mean it is accessible so back to the whole cars and everything things might be more expensive but to be able to venture out and you know find something cool to do it is cheaper and easier like yeah a lot more than when you first came back or came over here. Um, I've been talking with Andy and other people about like Ebisu um, there hasn't been a drift track really built in probably 20 years you would say in yep. Japan um, so all of the drift tracks here are pretty mental compared to like American standards like Toge and Manami and stuff like they're pretty crazy um, They're really cool. They're very unique. Toge is obviously like Little Mountain Road. Manami is a jump track Like you're jumping into a stadium with walls and stuff. It was purpose-built for drifting which in America The only purpose-built like drift track thing for competition is just the horseshoe at Road Atlanta. Would you is that accurate? Yeah, can't I can't think mean, of anything yeah, else I mean, purpose built. But I was going to say, do you think there's going to be anything else infrastructure wise built in Japan, like purpose built for drifting to change the game? Like at Manami, for instance, you could have, you go over the jump and you go even faster than ever before with a little bit more run up. And then like there's a bank at the end. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like up where the wall, like the cars, if they screw up, they hit the fence. Like you could bank that or something. So the cars are like, like skateboarding or BMX where they go in and like they use that to slow down and then rocket ship off. You know, like there's, there's different things you could do to really like change the game with different, um, how do you say, like banks and instead of doing yeah. a big bank on an oval, you know, you're doing a bank to stop the car, yeah. like, you know, crazy stuff. You I, could... I think there was a guy that built the track down south, um, but I don't know what happened with yeah something about licensing and stuff like that. That's all the, the obstacles they always have. But ABC is always kind of looking into, you know, um, bettering the place to make it more exciting and stuff like that. So 
I remember when it was like P1, the phase one of Ebisu a long time ago, there was, there was, the jump wasn't really there. You couldn't really connect it because it was so much narrower. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, watch old videos and stuff like that, you'll see the Ebisu Minami being like no stands. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, but here they'll try to do that to better it, to make it safer, um, to, to make it more exciting. And there are a lot of tracks that are in Japan that are still not super open to drifting. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that nobody knows about it. And mm -hmm. guys like you, we're all here. Um, so maybe from next year or something like that, we could show people around on going to different tracks and saying, hey, this is available. And I think it's the more it's more the availability of, it's easy, car's here, you're in Ebisu. You can drive around, get gas within the track and blah, blah, blah. But obviously it's probably harder for a foreigner to come to Japan and say, hey, you know, I want to transport my car from here to go to this track to do one track day event. It's going to cost a lot of money and stuff like that. But hopefully you yeah. can change that up, right? I don't know. This is a magic Disneyland and it's the least amount of effort to go drifting you can possibly put in as long as you have the entry to like purchase a car yep. and like get yourself here. But like day to day, you cannot realistically have, like if you stitch 20 days together and you drift for 20 days, there's, it's so much cheaper than doing it anywhere else in the world because you're not trailering, you don't have a truck, you don't have a trailer, you don't have the trailering between places. You have a great exchange rate right now between American and Japanese currency. You know, stuff is cheap, um, the cars are here, they have mechanics here on site, the tire machines are on site, the gas, like, the gas station's on site, has fantastic gas. Like, I don't think you'll ever really have another facility like this because the bubble economy allowed it to happen, I guess, in Japan. I'm guessing that's the yeah, main reason yeah. that happened. So it was kind of like a bubble thing that got built and now it kind of sustains itself through very odd ways of lots of gaijin coming in and everything. Um, I don't know if you would really have another place like this in the world, especially yeah. because I think the liability laws in America would stop a facility from this, like this really from yeah. happening. Um, this place would be mentally expensive in the United States to try and run <laughs> yeah. because they don't have track staff at each individual yep. track. Sometimes they don't you're have by yourself ambulance. and yeah. you're just like, oh, you know. There's no track staff for the most part. There's no ambulances. Um, there's nothing around. So the cost to run the facility is so much cheaper. A lot of the time when I do track rentals and stuff, just the ambulance and safety truck and staff cost will be more than the rental cost mm -hmm. of the facility sometimes. You know, like, so it just, yeah. it brings the accessibility down where sometimes if you're only driving a half day here, you're paying $35 to drive. Mm -hmm. And, and after American it. exchange rate, it's like 30, mm -hmm. like it's mental. Um, well, I, I think the, that's obviously without all the other costs. Everybody's going to like, yeah. oh, oh, here's yeah, tires going, and stuff. Yeah. I just mean track costs. But it's true though. And it seems like all the foreigners that come here too, mm -hmm. I, I mean, things happen, you know, here as well too. Yeah. there's a lot of trouble but a lot of the guys that actually don't live in japan and flies in from outside a lot of people they respect the place they mm -hmm. follow the you know minimal rules and stuff like that and thank you for that you know and, and that's what you know guys like you that come in and you know do the right thing makes it okay versus you know if somebody comes in and they just tear this place up uh the people here are gonna have bad you know taste in their mouth and be like you know we don't want any more foreigners and it's not like that it seems like everybody around the area too is welcome welcoming you know a lot of the foreigners too so hopefully like we're talking about this is like at a different level of not even just drifting this is like uh just for like um anybody trying to visit japan you know mm -hmm. the drifter guys are actually opening up doors for other people that wants to just come to chill and check out japan i was at uh the matsuri the other day there was people that i think rode the bus up here or walked there were people walking up to here and it's it's a far walk from society down here but I think they just came to just check it out. They didn't mm -hmm. drive. I don't even know if they like drifting, but I probably think that they saw it online and thought like, oh, this is a cool place to go to. And you know, here you are, you know? So, I mean, there's a difference being made um, by a lot of the foreigners coming in. So hopefully, like you can do that with everywhere else too. I mean, this is Ebisu, this is nice. I know it's, you know, easy and stuff like that. But for the guys that are at the next level, like we were speaking earlier, if the availability of being somewhere, um, at a different track too that'll be cool too and at the same time <clears throat> the drive time too you don't do just one car at a time or two cars at a time here you get the whole roulette thing where there's trains going on all the time and that goes on with other tracks you have like a 15 a lot of the track day events they have at other tracks it's like a 15 minute you know yeah. window where 10 cars go out and all 10 cars are driving and driving and driving for 15 minutes and you got like five or six heats for the day and that's way more than enough time that you can get um 
then maybe a couple of drifting events that you can have maybe in the States or anywhere else. Yeah. Sign me up. Are you going to promote that right now? Uh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try to work something out so we can do that. I mean, it'll, it'll take a little bit of time, but that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be cool. I think it would be amazing if guys like you that had their pulse on the drift community, cool cars, track access, transportation, and everything would rent cars to people like myself and my people that hang out with me and stuff to come drifting because you would open up yeah. other facilities to us. Because right now, this is really the only facility we can drift at easily unless we have friends. Like, I drove Mehan, but it was only because Yokoi had a car for me and all this other stuff. And it was like a friend deal. Like, you can't leverage friends for every single yep. place. It's too much. Like, it's too much to have all that. Yeah. And now in America, there's tons of people coming over and driving with me. Um, Kev wants to do it from here. He's the guy, I think he won um, G1 yeah, last yeah, year, yeah, yeah. if you know Kev. Um, the Dormanati guys are coming over because I was just in Poland. Um, you know, we have people coming back and forth and stuff and borrowing cars from me. We have like, I borrow their car there, they borrow yep. the car here. Um, Suenaga's coming over, that's gonna be extremely cool. He's gonna come drive in Texas in one of my cars. Nice. Um, so I was gonna say, it's so cool, like, cause then hopefully like, I'll get to hang out with him here and he teaches me something cause that guy's mentally good. Um, and he's always at the track. Yep. Um, yeah, so, cool. Thank you yep, so much for cool. talking with us. Is any closing thoughts or anything? Um, about something interesting that you can think of, some type of Japanese style or American style that moved back and forth. Because I know you talked about, um, a lot of people don't understand it, but like Japanese car stuff influenced American car stuff for a while. And then American car stuff had like Lambo doors and like weird eclipses and all that stuff. And that was a Spocom scene in America. That got reintroduced into Japan and the Japanese were like importing Nopi cars for a while. You know what I mean? Like all the APC stuff or, you know, like back and forth, like it was a really weird clash of stuff. And you'll see yeah. the Japanese guys, you think they only like, you know, SRs and 1Js and everything else. When Yokoi and, you know, Tezuka and stuff came to America, they're like, I want to drive a Mustang, yeah, American yeah. V8. They just wanted to drive V8, V8, V8. They're like, I've driven a 240 or, you know, a Sylvia, I don't care. Um, so they're really excited about that stuff. Yep. Anything interesting? Like Daigo drives all V8s now. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got... He's one of the guys that actually got like the biggest influence, probably the U.S. I mean, all yeah. these builds of the cars are like the U.S. style. You know, not not so many things on the car, very minimal. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the whole. You know, I'm never online, probably because I'm old. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know how to use. You got a flip phone? No, I got a <laughs> smartphone. But all I know how to do use it is answer phone calls. But no, but you know, that's the thing where. Uh, the biggest thing I see in the U.S. is just there's so many people that if you're not in, then you're not in in the U.S. Like, let's say if you're not, you know, if you're not tied up with one thing, then you're not cool anymore. But that's mm -hmm. not true. It's like you got guys that likes SRs. You guys got guys that likes turbos, V8s. Um, I don't know, front-wheel drive cars, rear-wheel drive cars, American cars, Japanese cars. It doesn't really matter because, like we were talking earlier, the population is getting smaller. So... Right now, instead of saying, oh, yeah, you, you drive these cars with wide fenders, a slam car versus competition car, this or that, it's okay. It doesn't really matter what you drive. It's like, at least, if you're there and you're doing it, if you're competing, you can be good. You could be at pro level. You could suck. You could have a lot of money. You could have not no money. It doesn't matter. Making the effort to do something, and that's what counts. So, if you're actually trying something and you don't look cool, it's okay. It's, you be you. You don't have to have an American style. You don't have to have Japanese style. You just be you and do it. And that's probably what happened with the whole drifting thing and this is where we're at right now. So everybody yeah. just become themselves and you know, just have a good time and be safe. Except Number those one. camber guys, they're retarded. No, I'm man, joking. That's, that's it, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, be safe. That's it. That's all it is. Be safe, be respectful. You know, don't screw other people. Yeah. Oh, we're talking. Are we talking about drifting or life? Drifting. Okay. Drifting. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. I'm going to go give ride alongs on Manami right now. I've had an amazing time. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking time. See you guys later. Bye, Robbie. All right, Sai. Let's go. This that way down the cliff. All right. No. I want to give a huge shout out to What Monsters Do for making our Japanese content possible and Inky Wheels. If it was not for them, because this content is so expensive to do in Japan, we would not be able to do it. Thank you so very, very much. Go to their website, buy some merchandise. Here's a discount code for 20% off so you can save some money. It's Ebisu. Thank you so much. Bye.
so good.